the video solutions to the Kinemax worksheet where you're listing the givens. Problem number one. An angry lo mob lynches a physics teacher after throwing, uh, after receiving their grades. They throw the physics teacher off a tall building. They throw the physics teacher straight down with a velocity of 20 meters per second. The teacher falls for three seconds before landing on a stack of empty cardboard boxes. How high was he thrown from? And I've already got a diagram showing everything, but let's talk about where the numbers come from. They're all given in the text clues of the problem itself. First one is a unit clue, meters per second, and this is the beginning of our story. That's our 20 meters per second, because that's where he's thrown. Our next one is the fact that he's in the air for three seconds, so that's going to be a time. Our units are a clue that's going to be a time. And because they're throwing him off a tall building, that's going to be free fall. And at free fall, that means he's going to accelerate downwards at 9.8 meters per second squared. And you can see in the diagram that I've added on the side, I've got the teacher at the top, that's the beginning of our little story, 20 meters per second. I made it negative because I'm saying going down is negative. Time is three seconds, and the acceleration is negative 9.80 meters per second squared. And the question is asking for how high he's thrown from, so that's going to be a distance or the x variable. So here's our givens. Three seconds, and then negative 20 meters per second because he's going down. He's in free fall, so the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That's an implied given. And finally, x naught is going to be zero for all the problems that we're doing, unless it states otherwise later on. And if what we don't know or what we're looking for is our unknown variable x. So this is really what the final list will look like, something like this. Question number two. Baseball rolls horizontally at 45 meters per second. The ball slows down at a rate of 5 meters per second squared. How long is the ball moving before coming to rest? Now here's a diagram of the situation. So I've got my initial velocity, my acceleration, and my final velocity. And I got all these numbers from unit clues. The ball's rolling at 45 meters per second horizontally. So there's my a velocity. I need to know if it's the beginning or the end of my story, or which velocity it is, and I can tell that it's the beginning of my story. You can see that on my picture, it's at the beginning of that. And it's slowing down at, at 5 meters per second squared, so that's a change in velocity, that's our acceleration. And I made it negative because it says it's slowing down. It said how long is the ball in the air, and in this case the use of the word long is not a length, but actually a time and then it comes to a rest. So that means that at the end of its trip it's going to have a final velocity of zero. So my givens, horizontally its initial velocity, it's the start of the story. It's changing velocity at 5 meters per second squared and since it's slowing down it's losing velocity, so that's why it's minus 5 meters every second it's in motion. And it comes to a rest, so the final velocity is zero. X naught we're going to make equal to zero. It's kind of like the free space in bingo, you can always assume that for our problems. And then finally, we're looking for the time, how long is in the, uh, how long the ball's moving. This is what your final list of givens would look like. Problem number three. A meteor falls from the sky to the Earth. The meteor already has an initial velocity downward when it was spotted. If it hit the Earth at 335 meters per second after being seen for 30 seconds, then what was the initial velocity of the meteor? Of course, we're neglecting air resistance in this problem. So the meteor falls, so that's going to be an implied given of negative 9.8 meters per second squared, or at least a change in velocity of 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. It's going to hit the Earth at 335 meters per second, meters per second of velocity, and if it's hitting the Earth, in this case, that's the end of our story, so that'll be a final velocity, and 30 seconds, so that'll be the time. So I drew a diagram showing everything, my unknown initial velocity, my acceleration time, and final velocity of my diagram located kind of at the beginning of the story and end of the story in the picture. And then I'll list my givens. Final velocity, negative 335, because it's going down when it hits. Acceleration, negative 9.8 meters per second squared, because it's going down. Times 30 seconds. And the initial velocity is what I'm looking for. Problem number four. A car started from rest and accelerated at 9.4 or 9.54 meters per second squared for six and a half seconds. How much distance was covered by the car? Okay, what are my clues here? Rest, so something's going to be zero, some velocity is going to be zero. Accelerated, so its velocity is going to change at 9.54 meters per second every second. And it does that for six and a half seconds. So I made a little diagram to kind of show what's going on. I've got rest, I've got an acceleration, time, distance, and I can see I've got my car moving. So if my diagram kind of tells everything, 
with my list of givens, initial velocity is zero, because that's the beginning of our story where it started. It changed speed at a rate of 9.54 meters per second every second. And it did this for six and a half seconds. And I'm looking for how much distance it traveled. Number five. A paper airplane is thrown horizontally with a velocity of 20 miles per hour. The plane is in the air for 7.43 seconds before coming to a standstill on the ground. What is the acceleration of the plane? So what do I know? Let's look for some unit clues. I have 20 miles per hour, so that's going to be a velocity. I've got the fact that it's in the air for 7.43 seconds, so seconds is a time. And it's coming to a standstill, so that's going to apply the velocity is going to be zero. So I'll draw a picture of the story. So it starts off at 20 miles per hour. That's why I know it's initial velocity, because it's starting that way. The time, 7.43 seconds, and it comes to a rest, so that's going to be the final velocity of zero. And the acceleration is unknown, that's what I'm looking for. So my list of givens would look something like this. Initial velocity, 20 miles per hour. Final velocity, zero. Time is 7.43 seconds, and acceleration is what I'm looking for. Now, if you were actually going to use these numbers to solve the problem, you do have to take one more step, and that's take 20 miles per hour and convert that to meters per second, because we're doing everything in SI units. Last problem, problem number six. A pile driver drops from a height of 35 meters before landing on a piling. What is the speed of the driver when it hits the piling? Um, a piling is a big steel tube that you fill with concrete. You hold up bridges, for example, and buildings. So what's important here is when I'm assigning the signs, the acceleration and position, all the signs that are on here, anything, everything that goes in the same direction has to have the same sign, S-I-G-N sign. So let's start with my clues. The pile driver drops. Okay, every time it drops, that means two givens are implied. One, the word drop means initial velocity zero, and two, the acceleration is going downwards at 9.8 meters per second squared due to gravity. My other implied given is 35 meters. Well, that's a distance. Let's be how far it's going to travel. So I'll draw a little diagram with this information. From the word drop, I got the initial velocity zero and the acceleration is downwards. And the x is negative 35 because it goes down. And then I have this final velocity that I'm looking for. So my list of givens in this case would look something like this. The initial velocity is zero, acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and the distance it travels is negative 35 meters, and the velocity is uh, unknown. I also know that x naught is equal to zero. It's not in the list, and that's one of those things that we're just going to always assume in our problems. So notice that the acceleration and the distance it travels are both negative. What's important here is not necessarily that they're both negative, but they're both the same sign. So the acceleration and distance can be positive, or the acceleration and distance can both be negative. And that's just because they're both pointing downwards in this problem.